And welcome to Interesting to See, your daily sports podcast, news, narratives, takes, and gambling. I am Nick. What a glorious day of football. Said I wouldn't do that anymore. I lied to your faces. What a glorious day of football it was in the good old U.S. of A. yesterday. Two college games, two pro games, a Tuesday night single header because the NFL doesn't understand how rules work. And so they did the COVID thing where there were two effing games at the same time. Luckily... I have my parents' streaming information, and I can watch both of them with NFL Sunday Ticket. That's how you did it. If you had Sunday Ticket, you could watch whichever one was out of market. We're going to talk about football today and some other stuff. This will be a quick show. I am traveling tomorrow and Friday, and I think I will be able to do a show. I might shh, pre-record the one on Friday because the games are already scheduled. <clears throat> what? I'm not sure. So let's start with uh, NFL football. Matthew Stafford last night. For those of us that are Lions fans knew that he was really good, he became the fastest quarterback of all time to reach 50,000 yards. He did it in 182 games. By age, he will not be the fastest. I think someone else has it, maybe Marino or somebody. I'm not sure. But he lost, uh, I don't know, off the top of my head, like 19 or 25 games, somewhere in that range, 19 to 20-ish uh, games. In his first couple of years, he had the separated shoulder, and he had some other issues. It's like He missed a couple of games in his first couple of years, so he won't be that this by age. He's first... Started in the NFL when he was 20 or 21. He was really young. Uh, he became the fastest to 50K, which is uh, super duper important. Um, <laughs> the the Rams look really, really good. Like, really good. One interesting thing to note here that I find fascinating is that Calvin Johnson's record of single season single season receiving yards was set in 2012 with Matthew Stafford at quarterback. <clears throat> now the Lions did not make, they did not make the playoffs that year. Of course, not very good, but it was a really cool year for Lions fans and whatnot. It was also the year that Adrian Peterson broke. Did he break the record? He got to 2000, whatever it is that he did. He won the MVP the same year that Calvin Johnson did all that stuff. It was really incredible. Cooper cup right now with three games to go. Has 1,625 receiving yards. He leads all players. We'll look into the stats on that in a minute. Calvin Johnson's number is, let me see, 1964. So that means that, which is kind of fucking crazy because Julio Jones, wow, Julio Jones three years later got has the second place one in front of Jerry Rice. A lot of the players in this list are still active. Uh, that makes sense because we are in a passing season. Right now, Cooper Cup's 2021 campaign, if the, game, if the season ended today, he would be the 19th all-time. He would be behind Randy Moss, Torrey Holt, Jimmy Smith, Josh Gordon, Marvin Harrison, Julio Jones, Calvin Johnson, Herman Moore, Torrey Holt again, Antonio Brown again, Marvin Harrison again, Michael Thomas, Charlie Hennigan from 1961 for the Houston Oilers. Good for you, Charlie Hennigan. Isaac Bruce, Antonio Brown again, Jerry Rice again, Julio Jones again, and Calvin Johnson again. He's probably going to get there, uh, which is part of the 17-game season, but he could theoretically get, he would probably have gotten pretty close without it. He's averaging, let's find out if I can find his stats, regular season yards per, he's played, there's 16 games, that means he's played 14 games, he's getting close. Um, I would like to point out that Calvin Johnson and Cooper Cup, <clears throat> for these records, are the same quarterback. How about that? Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. The Rams beat the Seahawks, the Seahawks look like their last gasp. Uh, one thing I found interesting from this game 
was the Los Angeles Rams Twitter account. They did something that was really stupid and hilarious. So I'll bring it up right here. We'll bring it up for the YouTube folks. Uh, there you go. There it is. So let's watch this play. Do you want to do you want to hear the sound? We might as well. There are people listening on the podcast. Who cares? Let's do it. Let's do some sound. So let's just watch the play. This is Russell Wilson. It's the fourth quarter, eight minutes left. They've got the ball at uh, the Seahawks have the, the ball at their own 36 yard line. It's third and 14. So they got to get the first down. It's the, you know, it's coming around. They got to get, they got to get some points. So here's the play. Let's watch it. Game. Here's Russ. Shotgun five wide. Russ takes step, steps Wilson up, throws deep. deep. Metcalf is Metcalf wide. Knocked the away at the last open. moment. And it looks like either A, Russell Wilson is not back from his finger situation. Or B, he was impacted on the throw by either Von, Von Miller or Aaron Donald, as want, as is you know want to happen. What's interesting about this, and let's go back and watch it again for those of you watching. We're gonna drag the cursor. There's Russ. There's Russ. There's Russ. Let's stop it right there. See this guy right here that's open. That's DK Metcalf. And this guy is Jalen Ramsey, who's probably the best corner, maybe even best and most important defensive player in the league outside of Aaron Donald, who is like beyond analysis at this point. Yeah, so that they got open, and then Russell Wilson underthrew it, and DK had to come back and get it, and and uh, he almost did, but Jalen Ramsey made up and did this, and then he's like, so let's watch Jalen Ramsey. Look at him. He's looking all cocky. He's making fun of him. He's doing the baby thing because DK Metcalf has a pacifier for a mouthpiece, which is objectively hilarious. You can't make fun of him because he's making fun of himself. It's fucking hilarious. So he's doing this. And look at that. I'm so good. You can't throw on me. Look how wide open he is. He got torched. That's a practice squad player. Got torched. The funny part about this is if you read the tweet, just a reminder that Jalen Ramsey is the best corner in the league. They tweeted this out. The LA Rams account tweeted this out. They tweeted out like the worst rep of his career. He got and then Jalen Ramsey and DK Metcalf hate each other. Metcalf fucking owned him. Look at that route. That's hilarious. I found that hilarious. All right, Eagles game. Uh, Eagle. The game started as worst as it possibly could for your Philadelphia Eagles. Um. It was hilarious, though, because there was one of the funniest interceptions ever. The Eagles end up eking out the game. Uh, a lot of a lot of Washington players are still on the COVID list. The game had to be postponed until Tuesday because of COVID. A lot of guys are still on the list, of course. And, you know, Four. the biggest problem with that is that, you know, if the quarterback's out, it doesn't really matter what happens. There's Gronk. We're going to get rid of this real quick. Thank you. I'll bring it up in a second. I want to show you this interception, and I'll describe it to those of you that don't want to see it. So it was an out route. It's third and two. And tight end runs an out route. He drops the ball, and it is an egregious drop. Like, awful. Like, preposterously stupid, terrible drop. I'm over here. Let's, should we pull it up? What happens is, and this is so funny. I can't believe this happened in a football game. So the drop is so bad. And tight ends, this happens to tight ends because they're so big and lumbering that they occasionally have, they, they need to, like, tuck the ball away. So let's play it. Smith. All right, you so watch the play. Here comes Dallas throw. Goddard, Three out route, ends. wide open. Nice little pick play. So he drops the ball. And you see the Dallas Washington team, they're running. They're running with the ball, right? But green in front of it. So let's watch let's the replay. So here's Jalen Hurts. Off his hands, turns around, kicks in the heel, lands in Landon Collins' lap. <laughs> I love that. That's hilarious. Jalen Hurts looks like a really, really good quarterback when he's targeting Devontae Smith, and he looked really good last night. Uh, quarterback controversy in Philly, of course, as we talked about yesterday. So we want to update NFL standings. I don't know. We can do that for our preview tomorrow. Let's go to the college game where the Mountain West Conference is crushing it. Two Mountain West Conference teams played yesterday. The Wyoming Cowboys and the San Diego State Aztecs, the poor UTSA Roadrunners. They lose two of their last three against their two best opponents on the schedule. And their undefeated season finishes for naught. It was the two best records of any bowl game this year combined, except for teams in the playoff. Um, if UTSA had been undefeated, I'd probably be a little fussy about them not being in and, you know, just stand for them. But they were not. San Diego State had a really great year. They had a great defense and a freaking preposterous punter. And they found a way to beat basically everybody. Pretty pretty impressive from San Diego State. The Mountain West Conference is on fire. Utah State, they beat Oregon State by double digits. Wyoming allowed Kent State to score 38 points, but the two of them combined for 90 points. Wyoming, 52 to 38. So San Diego State wins, or Utah State wins. Wyoming wins. And there's another, oh, Fresno State won. They beat UTEP. So Mountain West Conference is, is on top. The Pac-12 is the only conference that has had a power, like, uh, only Power 5 team that's played a bowl until tonight when Missouri plays Army. I fully expect Missouri got bowl eligible? No. Mizzou? No. It says right here on the schedule they're playing Army. Hmm. That uh, That's happening, huh? Why is there only one bowl game? Do people, I don't understand sports leagues. 
There is nothing to watch on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. This would be a great night for, like, another bowl. We had football from 3 p.m. until midnight last night. The college kids are home. The kids that want to watch the game are home. You're going to make us kick at 8 because it's on prime time? People want to watch Frosty the Snowman. The kids who are hung over from going out last night at home from college that are Missouri guys, I don't know, Army guys are obviously respectful. I know no one in the Army would possibly drink. Never. But if they did, they'd be hung over at 3 p.m. and would really like to watch their team. Other games coming up. The next Power 5 team that's on the schedule are the University of Florida Gators against UCF. Oh, man. I want to make some white trash jokes. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to make some jokes. I'm not making jokes. I'm not making jokes. There are some good players in this team that you'll see in the pros. Uh, North Texas plays Miami, Ohio tomorrow. We've got a doubleheader. That's on. And then on Friday, uh, again, a night game. There's no day games on Friday. What the hell are we doing? It's Christmas Eve. Nobody's doing anything. People are doing stuff at 8 p.m. Oh, wait, that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's the Hawaii Bowl. My bad. I digress. That game probably kicks at like, what, 1 noon in Hawaii? All right, fine. I, I changed my mind. That's legit. Georgia State, Ball State, that's coming up. And then next week, I think that I will try to do the daily podcast. We'll see. I'm traveling to Arizona with my folks, which means I would have to get up at like 3.30 in the morning. So we shall see what happens. I think uh, a lot of – there are some pretty good bowl games. And when once the circle before we get around to Oregon and Oklahoma, that's the Alamo Bowl. That's the best non-New Year's Six Bowl. I'm really excited about that one. Wake Forest and Texas A&M I find fascinating because then all of you will be like, the SEC doesn't play any offense. We're about to find out because Wake Forest, I think, is like the sixth or seventh best offense in the country. Uh, Texas A&M, they have a bunch of studs on defense. They cannot play offense. They're completely preposterously stupefied by moving the ball. Then after that, Central Michigan and Boise in the Arizona Bowl. Oh, that's the Barstool Sports shit show. <laughs> Can't watch that one on TV. Can't watch that one on TV. You got to go to Tucson or you got to watch it on Sling, which is annoying. Barstool got an Arizona Bowl. Central Michigan and Boise State, what a clash. And then uh, that's on New Year's Eve. That'll precede the uh, the college football playoff. I think we'll have time to preview those. I'm sure I'll do a couple shows. Might as well drop some things and check in on the holidays. Um, and then new, the New Year's Six Bowls are going to be litty, absolutely litty. The one that sucks the most is Notre Dame, Oklahoma State. Man, a classic rivalry that is. The Baylor Ole Miss game makes sense. Baylor and Ole Miss are close to New Orleans. I think that's actually going to be kind of fun. The Ole Miss offensive coordinator is Art Bryles' kid, and now they're like, oh, well, that's why Ole Miss looks the way it does. Correct. LSU's playing Kansas State for uh, a, that's a big bragging rights game because if LSU, that's a big moment for a non-SEC conference to like poke some holes in the SEC arguments for next year. That's a game that that game kind of matters a lot for college football, Reddit, and Twitter. Okay, <sighs> let's see what else happened in the world of sports yesterday. I have some stuff for you guys. I don't have a lot of stuff for you guys, but I have some stuff for you guys. We are at the 15-year anniversary of Nick Saban getting mad at reporters that he's not going to be the head coach of Alabama. He has since been the head coach of Alabama every year. <laughs> it's been 15 years, Nikki. Consequently and ironically, Tom Brady got shut out on Sunday Night Football. It was the first time in his career that he got shut out since Nick Saban did it in 2006. Also, there are no defensive players in the NFL who were in the NFL at the time that he was last shut out, which makes sense. Defensive players don't play for 16 years because their bodies get broke did. Saw this from Barstool Sports Detroit. This is hilarious. This is a kid that's meeting Clyde Edwards-Alaire, a running back. I would say star running back, but not quite. For the Kansas City Chiefs, he's really excited. It's a charitable moment. This guy's got a fan or whatever. He's going to bring a majority. See, see, the kid doesn't think that uh, Clyde is Clyde. Let's see who the kid thinks he is. (laughs) They don't know who Clyde is. Maybe you'll recognize it. Oh, it's 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 Did you hear that? I love that. Absolutely love that. Wait, that was not in Detroit. That was in Kansas City. The kid is just a Tigers fan. My bad. My bad, dude. All right, let's do, uh, we got some college football. We, we preview the games. Let's take a look at the gambling situation. Army is favored. Holy shit, Missouri. That is embarrassing. Army has a good squad. They're favored by a touchdown. They're favored by a touchdown. What's the total? Oh, my God. The total's 54. Okay, so that's not at least egregious. 54, this is great. Favorite by touchdown. This is everyone's favorite game. So 55 divided by 2 is 27.5, and, and it's a 7-point thing, so 27.5. And the 3.5 is a 31 to 24. Oh, <gasps> fucking nailed it. 31-24 is a prediction by Vegas. God, that was awesome. I'm getting better at this. I have Doing it live, doing it live is the most important part. For me, if I can, if I do it live, it'll be fine. So Army's favored by, by six and a half. I mean, I don't know. I don't think that's going to be how it goes. I think that 
They're going to score enough points to win by a touchdown. Their defense, Missouri's offense is that bad they can't score more than 20 points on Army. You don't have a quarterback to score on Army by having a quarterback. I guess they run the clock out. I don't know. This game stinks, actually, now that I think about it. I'm going to I'm gonna hammer the under. Hammer the under. It's, it's uh, hammer, hammer, hammer time. Hammer the under. Let's, let's get, a, get you out of here on this. Craig Bowl, the head coach of the Wyoming Cowboys, who brought, what he brought, a whip or a lasso or a hatchet or something to the press game, the press conference. The greatest tradition in all of sports, fat kids everywhere, is worst nightmare. In the Idaho famous potato bowl, they don't dump Gatorade on your head, which is awesome because it's freezing in Boise this time of year. They dump French fries. That's ever interesting to see. I'll be back in better than ever tomorrow morning. I haven't decided what I'm going to do during the dead week between Christmas and New Year's. I'll probably check in a couple times. That's neither here nor there. Back and better than ever. Tomorrow morning. Appreciate you guys.